It's 131. I'd like to call the meeting of the Traffic and Transportation Commission for December 21st, 2015 to order. Roll call. Commissioner Witcher. Here, sir. Commissioner Littlefield. Here, sir. Commissioner White. Not here. Commissioner Hale. Here, sir. Commissioner Shuline. Here. Commissioner Miller. Here. Commissioner George. Not here. And Commissioner Yonkel. Here. And I have a motion concerning the minutes of the November 16th, 2015 meeting. Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve from Commissioner Hale. Second. Second. Second by Commissioner Shuline. Any discussion? Okay, we have a motion to approve the minutes from Commissioner Hale and second by Commissioner Shuline. Can I have your votes, please? Okay, item is approved. Okay, can the record show that uh, Commissioner George is now here? Thank you. All right. Uh, report on license, taxi, and record service. Sir? Good afternoon, Commissioners. For the month of November on taxis, we had 16 new drivers, 19 renewed, four of them got their permits replaced. Vehicles, 13 passed, three failed, and uh, two complaints, and 10 field inspections. Limousines on drivers had nine new, three renewed. On carriages, it had two renewed. Pedicabs, five new, two renewed, and one of their pedicabs was inspected, it passed. And on shuttles, I had uh, two new and two renewed, and on vehicles, I had seven pass. Any questions? Hey, does anybody have any questions? Sergeant? All right, thank you very much, sir. It is no items on the consent docket. Okay, we go to item uh, 5A, Jasmine Enterprises, LLC, doing business as OKC Green Taxi. Consider an application for a, sir, a sir, uh, certificate of public convenience and necessity from Jasmine Enterprises LLC doing business as OKC Green Taxi to operate 150 vehicles in taxi service. We have someone here who wants to speak on this item. Did, did you have anything that you want to say? Can I have your name, your address? Um, you have a Islam, 7015 Lowood Lane. Um, I, hopefully, I turn in the application, whatever required for a fix I did so if you guys have any more questions just let me know please okay thank mm -hmm. you very much all right staff input please okay you've got a complete application before you um, staff would recommend approval as it's presented okay can we have a motion concerning item 5a like motion to approve we have a motion from Commissioner Hale to approve item 5a do we have a second 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 by Commissioner Witcher any discussions Okay, we have a motion to approve item 5A from Commissioner Hale, seconded by Commissioner Witcher. Can I have your votes, please? Okay, item is approved. Okay, we're going on to item 5B. John Collins, owner, doing business as Limo 4 LLC, to consider an application for a certificate of public convenience and necessity from John Collins, doing business as Limo 4 LLC, to operate three vehicles in limousine service. Do we have anybody here to speak on item 5B? Okay, can we have staff input, please? Okay, again, you've got a uh, complete application for a new limousine service to be operating uh, three vehicles. Uh, their application is complete, and we would recommend approval as presented. We have a motion concerning item 5B. I move approval. Okay, we have a motion to approve item 5B from Commissioner Witcher. We have a second. Second. Second by Commissioner Hale. Do we have any discussion on item 5B? Okay, we have a motion to approve item 5B from Commissioner Witcher, seconded by Commissioner Hale. Votes, please. Okay, item is approved. We go on item 5C, Valera Transportation LLC, to consider an application for a certificate of public convenience and necessity from Valar Transportation LLC to operate 10 non-emergency medical transport vehicles in van service. Do you have anybody here to speak on item 5C? 
If I could have your name, your address, you have up to five minutes, and please fill out a form when you're done. Okay. Lance Butler, 700 Northwest 7th Street. Um, just hope it gets approved. Any questions? Well, I, I, are you the owner or uh, the the representative manager. of the, of the uh, company? Representative of Valor Health, yes. Okay. Do you have anything that you'd like to say? If not, we'll just come to you when we have nope. any questions. That's okay. It. If you could just fill out a form, please, sir, while, while we wait. Can we have staff input, please? Uh, we've got a completed application. Um, I don't know if there will be any discussion regarding the, uh, there are two different uh, insurance forms that are provided with the application, and I think I would defer to the commission to discuss the, the appropriate coverage under those forms with the members of the commission. All right, do we have a motion concerning item 5C? I move to be approved. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Shuline to approve item 5C. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second from Commissioner Witcher. Do we have any discussion on item 5C? Mr. Hale. Yeah, I have a <clears throat> question regarding the certificate that was turned in. Uh, one was furnished to show the required automobile liability limits. Uh, but you were not a named insured on that form, so you were. It's my understanding they were informed of this situation. Another form was provided, but that form does not include any coverage for auto liability. So, where are we at as far as does your company have auto insurance or not? Yes, it covers. Uh, it's an umbrella coverage for Valor Health and covers all of our entities. Which okay, do you have the documentation for that? I believe that, I thought that's what we turned in. So is that it is not. I, I could be able to provide that, yes. Okay. I would prefer that we defer this till next month until we have the proper documentation. Okay, anybody else wish to discuss or have a, com a comment on item 5C? So the, the first one turned in did have the correct insurance on it but the second one did not okay i'll have to review that because i don't i thought they were the same form we just added a page so okay can the motion be changed then well yeah we'll have to go to the motion or just a second anybody else wishing to discuss something on item 5c is that something that the city would prefer that we wait 30 days or is it something that they could just go down and uh can we go ahead and approve it, but subject to them being insured tomorrow or today or, I mean, 30 days is a long time to wait without being in business if they're ready to go in business today. It's at the discretion of the commission if the commission uh, would rather have a motion subject to uh, the insurance be certi proper insurance certificate being submitted to the cert supervisor of licenses. That could be amended as well or deferral to the next month. It is up to the commission's discretion. In that case, we'd be leaving it to the supervisor of licenses to uh, verify the, the proper insurance coverage? Yes. Um, is that something supervisor of license does? If the supervisor of license has, uh, staff has, actually, I'll say staff has uh, reviewed the insurance in the past, yes. Okay. Um, if the commission would rather have it come before you again to ensure that it is proper, uh, the certificate is proper, that is uh, to your discretion. My personal opinion is that I, I don't need to necessarily see it. It'd be nice if maybe it was included for information next month, but I don't need to see it as long as we, we trust some agency to to see that Valor Transportation is listed with automobile liability. That's, that's the document that we haven't seen is um, the, the thing that has Valor Transportation as a named insured doesn't specifically list automobile liability. So uh, I'd, be, I'd be happy with us doing it as, as Kevin suggests, contingent upon that document being submitted. Before we go to any motion change or anything, any other comments on item 5C? Yes, ma'am. Just to clarify, so there would be legitimate insurance, legitimately approved, prior to being considered an operating entity. 
if that occurs outside of this body. I just want to be real clear on it. Right. If we were to modify the uh, the actual motion, that would be part of, of the modification that uh, okay. that their uh, authorization to operate would be mm -hmm. based upon their uh, that, that insurance being pro abided. And that same entity that would be the discretionary reviewer, they would have the discretion to not approve it if it doesn't meet uh, um, the liability insurance required. Well, and that would come back to us. Staff on that one. Well, at that point in time, it would, they, they would only be able to approve the application once they had verification that the proper insurance, the proof of insurance coverage was provided. And they would just hold the application until they received that. I think what it all boils down to is that uh, the, uh, the certificate originally provided with the application is, was for uh, Valor Health LLC, and then supplemental to that, we received a uh, insurance form that indicated that under that coverage, a series of other LLCs were covered. Now, the issue, I think what the primary issue is that just because that the other LLCs are listed as being covered, it is not known to this commission as to whether or not all the limits of coverage under Valor Health apply to that. So it's not known if these other LLCs are covered as a, as a part of, like, I guess, just general commercial insurance, or if they, in fact, have automobile liability insurance associated with them. That is the question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's way I understand it is all, it's all covered the same across all, all the entities, so I don't, I'll have to yeah. defer and that's, it's just a, on it. It's just a function of getting that verification. Yeah. Okay, ma'am, did that answer your question? I feel like recent months we've been real clear on the importance of clear documentation in front of this body on insurance before we approve. I just want to be consistent on that. That's where I am on it. Okay. Any other discussion on item 5C? Okay, we go back to the motioner, to Commissioner Schuline. Do you still stick to your motion? I'm happy to amend my motion to reflect the language that included by counsel if Commissioner Hale is satisfied. I would agree with the commissioner that we have been very tough over the last few months as far as making sure that the documents before us are correct. And no, I'm not in a big believer in putting people off that need to be in business and generating income. But at the end of the day, this should have, I mean, it, it's my understanding from counsel that this was, you're made aware of the problem with sufficient time to bring the corrected documents before us. Is that correct? That's my, that's my heartburn, is knowing that the information brought before us today was not correct and nothing's been done to resolve it. I was unaware it was the incorrect information. I was thought, we provided a list of all the LLCs that were covered under the insurance coverage. So I, I was under the impression we provided the correct documentation. Okay. And like I said, I'm willing to provide that as, now that I know it's not the correct one. Just to be clear, the, they're not saying the list isn't correct? Right. The understand. certificate itself isn't correct. Right. I, never, I did not understand that that was not correct. I, I assumed it was correct. I mean, when we turned it in, I haven't heard anything back since we've turned that one in. So. Just for clarity. What was provided to us, if you look under that automobile liability section mm -hmm. of the certificate that you gave the commission, it's blank. Correct. I see it, yeah. Okay, so I think that uh, that uh, Commissioner Shuline was deferring to you, Commissioner Hale. I don't know if you okay with us proceeding on with a modification to the motion or to a uh, defer. I think he's deferring to you. Thank you, Commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> this is a quick fix, and it should have been taken care of before you came before us today. I would prefer that the information presented to this body be accurate. Okay, so uh, over to Commissioner Shuline. Do you wish to modify your motion? I, I think I'll withdraw my motion. If, uh, that's okay if, if the... And you want to defer this item? I think it's good to defer until next month. Okay, so we, uh, we have a modification to the motion for 5C to defer item 5C to the next meeting. Let me go to Commissioner Witcher. Do you agree with that second? Or would you like to remove your second? I'd like to withdraw my second. Okay. 
So we have a motion right now from Commissioner Schuline to defer item 5C till next meeting so we could get all the paperwork correct. Do we have a second on that motion? I'll second that. Okay, we have a second by Commissioner Hale. Do we have any discussion on item 5C with the motion to defer? Yes, sir. I just feel like that we need to make it very clear to any applicant that whenever you come before us, I mean, this is a serious situation. I mean, this is, we're responsible for the safety of the public. And if we approve things contingent on, you know, further documentation, if you really want to be approved, you need to bring us the right information. That's the way I look at it. So that's the only comment I've got is that I feel like that we need to be very clear for all applications that it needs to be correctly presented to us for approval. Okay, any other comments on item 5C for the... the I've, I've got a yes, comment sir. about this uh, certificate where um, uh, there's A, uh, it says commercial general liability, um, each occurrence a million, and then it, you know, products three million, so on. And then I guess what's missing is under automobile liability. How, how is commercial general liability different than the automobile liability? Then also then there's an umbrella liability that's checked that has a $3 million each occurrence. So how, how do those not cover any automobile or just, just for general information here? The easiest way for me to explain it uh, probably will not meet Commissioner Hale's explanation, I'm sure. However, I will give an attempt, uh, if you would like, for general liability and insurance the in example I would give you is that it would cover if you were to go onto city property strike a fire fire hydrant and cut the water to several homes mm -hmm. whereas if you have automobile liability insurance you're actually covering that automobile uh, in an accident with another automobile or you're covering that with the passengers inside of that automobile so the commercial would be if you're going outside of the general scope of an automobile accident. It's a very quick summary, and I'm, as I said, mm -hmm. likely not to Commissioner Hill's uh, depth that he could go to and give you a further explanation. Okay. Well. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion on item 5C? Okay. We have a motion from Commissioner Shuline, seconded by Commissioner Hale, to defer item 5C to the next meeting. May I have you both, please. Okay, item is uh, deferred to the next meeting. We go on now to item 5D. Brian Fitzsimmons, AIA, President Fitzsimmons Architects, Inc., to consider a request for a mid block pedestrian crossing on Northwest 23rd Street, approximately 250 feet east of the east curb line of North Walker Avenue. And we have somebody here to speak on this. If I could have your name, your address, and you have up to five minutes, sir. Okay. Brian Fitzsimmons, Fitzsimmons Architects, 2721 North Walker. Um, I'm giving you a, a letter that was from Shane Hampton of uh, OU's Institute for Quality Communities and have something to kind of read through here to talk about our case. Um, Simmons Architects has been working on this project with the previous owners and the current owners since 2006. In the relatively in 10 years, many people have been through the building, neighborhoods have been actively engaged and offered input to the planning process of the Tower Theater. Among the most common concerns of stakeholders, prospective tenants, and community leaders is safe crossing from the theater's parking lot to the entry of the building. Furthermore, in the last couple of years, the City of Oklahoma City Planning Department, Uptown 20th Street Association, <coughs> and surrounding neighborhoods have actively pursued planning strategies in an effort to implement a safe pedestrian-oriented 23rd Street. In response, the Planning Department, Uptown 23rd, and the IQC developed a plan for the urban framework in 2014. Comments that are uh, part of what you have in front of you and also some other lines or some highlights that I just kind of like to read through. Uh, safe crossings across 23rd Street are few and far between and of primary concerns to the neighborhoods. The framework states that in most urban, this most urban section of 23rd 
opportunities to cross 23rd Street should be more closely spaced, including utilizing the median for safe mid-block crossings. The current owners purchased the building after the framework was developed. They anticipated that the city would pursue their significant investment in the framework to implement the opportunities this framework outlined for safe pedestrian experience, including the mid-block crossing. The current owners have spent 250000 on the new parking lot, anticipating connection would be explored. The new renovated theater will open this spring. The theater tenant is working with the national music concert promoter, a local university to schedule events. It is expected that an average of 500 people, up to 1,200 people will be attending events in the theater three to four times a week. Also, the church adjacent to the theater is utilizing the parking lot. This spring, people will cross the street and it is imperative that a safe method of crossing be provided. It will be two to three years before safe paths are created east and west along 23rd Street, especially the adjacent west sidewalk to Walker, which is underimproved. Existing crosswalks are not safe, as they are unsignalized and only marked with faded red paving. It is believed that most of the staff's concern for safety of the use of the mid-block crossing can be alleviated with the following enhancements, and there may be others. Curb extension to the adjacent parallel parking spaces to increase visibility on either side of the street. Addition of yield signs, roadway markings, overhead signs, or other methods of alerting pedestrians and drivers. Addition of bollards or similar methods at the median cut to prevent U-turns. Lower the speed limit on 23rd Street, which is needed regardless for all crossings to be safe. Um, higher traffic volumes here do not negate the need for increasing safety of crossings, as suggested in the staff report, but in fact increase the need to explore every opportunity available to enhance safety. This crosswalk is the first important step to provide needed connectivity and safety for pedestrians on 23rd Street. In Shane's letter, a good example is included on the second page of a safe mid-block crossing from a city in Colorado with virtually identical conditions and traffic volumes. In conclusion, per the city zoning 32 section 75, when the commission finds that pedestrian congestion requires installation of a crosswalk at a location other than intersections, the commission is authorized to instruct the public works department to install and maintain official traffic control signals and appropriate devices, markings or signs, and crosswalk mar markings on the surface of the roadway at such location. Also, per the National Association of City Transportation Officials in their Urban Street Design Guide, recommends mid-block cross recommends mid-block crosswalks where there is a significant pedestrian desire line, including building entrances. This location of connecting the theater entrance to the parking lot represents a significant pedestrian desire line. So in conclusion, I think it's imperative that we at least approve this in concept and then work with the uh, planning department of the best way to make this safe. Thank you very much. Could you fill out one of these green forms, please, for us? OK. Hey, does anybody else wish to speak? Mr. Do uh, Dobson, I believe. Jonathan? You have one of these. Is there anything you wish to say, sir? You have a no, Only name, if there's name, uh, Jonathan Dotson, 1220 Northwest 20th Street. Uh -huh. I was only present if there was any questions for the property owner. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. All right. Staff input, please. Okay. You've got our comments before you. A uh, few, few things I wanted to highlight for you is um, traffic volumes on this portion of Northwest 23rd Street are probably the busiest for several square miles. I mean, when you look at the traffic volumes carried on Classen Boulevard, Lincoln Boulevard, uh, 10th Street, and Northwest 36th Street, uh, there, is no, there are no um, average, average daily traffic volumes that are as high as this particular one block on Northwest 23rd Street. Uh, another thing to bear in mind when, when considering this particular request is that Within 50 feet from the, from the western edge of the parking lot that's been constructed is the uh, signalized intersection of Walker and Northwest 23rd Street, where there are pedestrian signals provided. Um, we, we did a little bit of additional research. There is a, a publication put out by the Federal Highway Administration 
a, a contract has studied called the safety effects of marked versus unmarked crosswalks at uncontrolled locations. Uh, in that particular study, they had, summar they had looked at uh, speeds and volumes on roadways, and they had a recommendation that when you get into a, when you're looking at a, a, a crossing location on a multi-lane roadway, either with or without a raised median, where your uh, average daily traffic volumes exceeded 15,000 vehicles per day, they didn't recommend the use of a mid-block crossing at a, at a location like that. So based on that, um, and due to its proximity to an existing pedestrian traffic signal, uh, staff does not have cause to recommend approval of the requested mid-block crossing as presented. Thank you very much. Do we have a motion concerning item 5D? Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the applicant's request and approve the mid-block crossing. Okay, we have a motion to approve item 5D from Commissioner Schuline. Second. And we have a second by Commissioner George. Do we have any discussion on this item? Ma'am. What's the expectation of the mid-block? Is it, is it activated by the user and then it stops traffic? There's nothing presented to that effect. It's just for a mid-block crossing. But it could. Just to bring attention to, I mean, what, what? In the past, we. Or is it just, is it just road markings? Or what, what? Because my, I, I'm seeing, you've got heavy traffic on 23rd Street. These people are trying to get through the intersection at Walker. They may or may not care about the pedestrian at the mid-block. As, as, as we're racing through that, that Walker intersection. I'm just trying to understand the reality and dynamics of what's going to happen if it were approved as is. Well, what's we, going to happen to that traffic on 23rd Street? What's the expectation at that mid-block for traffic? Well, we've done different things in the past. We've approved mid-blocks that had yellow flashing lights that were activated by somebody crossing to draw that attention. And we've also done mid-block where we, they just did the paint. Uh, this application is just for the mid-block crossing. It, it wasn't with anything else, and there was no money. And most of the time on these mid-block crossings, the applicant came with the money to pay for the, uh, the signal activation or the cross activation. This, this one doesn't have anything tied so to that. So approving this as presented, it's just a striping. For the mid-block crossing, there's no signage, there's no flashing, anything. Is yeah, the only correct? thing the city could do in addition to that would be to post uh, pedestrian crossing signs at the crossing itself. And where would those it, where would those likely be positioned? Would they be in the sidewalk next to the curb on the other side of the parallel parking? That's the only place they could be. If there's nothing that's slowing down traffic and helping people get across the road, what is the benefit of the paint? Is it a liability tool? I mean, where, where do, if the objective is to help people safely get across the road, is the paint adequate? And if the, or if the objective is to help them safely get across the road, why would they not, why would signage not direct them to go up to the intersection? Well, and, and, and I would defer to what the staff was talking about because of the speeds, the traffic volumes, et cetera. It, there's a recommendation to not do these things at that area because of the safety involved. Because drivers don't expect in the middle of that block area to have a crossway. Right, and this is kind of an unusual situation because with the, uh, with the uh, trees as they're currently configured in the center of the median, they, they, they become somewhat of a visual barrier for approaching traffic. I mean, you may or may not be able to see anyone waiting in that center center area if they've only crossed halfway and are waiting to continue, continue a crossing. So, it, you know, our, our primary concern is that this, this wouldn't necessarily, in and, of, in and of itself, necessarily be a safe crossing location, especially when 50 feet to the west of the west side of this parking lot, their pedestrian signals already provided at the traffic signal at Walker and 23rd. So, for Mr. Fitzsimmons, what you've provided the supplemental about pedestrians' survivability when getting struck. Mm -hmm. Does the, the, is the request of paint only, do you feel like that's no, the like a staged, a a staged request here? Or what? Maybe it is a staged request if we call it that. But um, 
we made application for this probably seven years ago, plus or minus, and it was denied at that time because there was no one crossing the street. That was what the staff report was based upon, and understandably so, there was no place to go. Well, 23rd Street has um, progressed dramatically since then. There are many, many people and many places to go. And when this opens, there will be an abundance of people crossing that street. So our intent is to at least get in concept the approval of a mid-block crosswalk, and we are more than happy to work with the safest way to do that, even if it's making it identical to that photograph on the ladder, the second photograph, where we add additional yield signs if we need flashing signs, things like that. We're concerned about safety as well. And we know that people are going to cross one way or the other. So we'd like the opportunity to work and make that as safe as possible. Is this parking well, lot um, restricted to uh, patrons of the theater or? No, it's, it's open parking actually. Uh, 23rd Street has a parking problem. We all know that. Um, so pretty much everyone that's developing anything along 23rd Street has more or less agreed that their parking lots are open. So this could be where very well be used by any place. The church that's adjacent to the east of the Tower Theater has already planned to use that parking lot on a daily basis for their activities as well. So it's going to be used a lot. And, and to get to the church to the east, they would have to walk to the east and could go to that where there's a stop sign there, correct? Is that what we're looking at? Is that where the church is? The church is... Uh, on this picture to the right? Yes. The one that's up on top? Okay. So, like, if, if they came out of the parking lot, if they were going to the Tower Theater, they could go left, cross at the signal light. If they're going to the church, they could go right and cross at that next intersection. Yeah, currently if you're coming out of the church, for example, uh, without a crosswalk, you would walk all the way down to Hudson or walk all the way to Walker, which is pretty much equidistance. Right. So it's one block of a walk, and uh, people certainly can walk a block, but the likelihood... But, but what, what your concern is, because there's a break in the medium right there, is that correct? Is there a break in the medium already there? There is a break in the medium. That people will see that break in the medium and automatically just go there? Absolutely. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? That people will come out of the parking lot, see the break in the medium, and go, well, that's the way to go, and, and they'll just automatically go there, which is... And I also think that even without the median, they would cross. It's the shortest it's route as well. I mean, there, there's right. going to be a natural tendency for this. So, so you the, so the in question first, to you so then, if, if you're receptive to things like lights and signage, the costs associated with it, would that come from the landowners, the, the people wanting to make this application? Because a lot of times, a lot of times that's what comes, and it's a lot easier to approve something, because if not, then it goes into the city, you know. Okay, hold on one second. Yeah. The only thing we've got on your agenda today is it's the way it's presented. It's just a mid-block pedestrian right. crossing. Right. Yeah, just right now it's just a regular, which would just, just be paint. Just Okay, so, yes, sir. Yeah, so just to highlight, this whole even getting to the mid-block crosswalk has been very much a process. If you look at the, the site for 140 space parking lot, its highest and best use is not to be a parking lot. For if we were looking totally at pedestrian safety, we would try to get a parking garage or something like that on the north side of 23rd and then develop the south side of 23rd. That's a really nice piece of developable property that we think we could do in accordance that made folks who live south happy and create really good urban texture. We met with the city and with multiple departments really over about four or five months to see if there was any way, even if it was some private dollars going in to invest to get a parking garage. Jonathan Russell was willing to throw in his lot as the site for a parking garage that could be accessed. And we just couldn't get enough traction there in terms of there being public and private investment. So at that point we realized really if we were going to do a favor to the, 
the community who lived around because we've had over 200 people come through the property and the whole thing has been you know the west side of our parking lot is not developed along uh, the sidewalk like Brian mentioned and so people are going to cross we watch people workers cross on a daily basis everyone's crossing there and the city has done a great job in working with the Institute of Quality Communities to say this is not the highest and best use the way the street is designed right now so we know over the next five years there is going to be some major infrastructure hopefully through the bond issuance to, to, to figure out how to make 23rd a street that's safe for pedestrians and for vehicles until we get there though we have this major issue of you know on a on a, a night where there is a good act there will be over a thousand people in that tower theater including people who are dining and eating and so we have to figure out they're going to cross my concern as a property owner has been how do we work to get a place where they can cross and it is safer than them just running across the street and hoping they don't get hit and so we're willing to work with the you know our whole goal has been to get approval to say yes let's start the process and then we want to re-engage the city the planning department and say what's the best way to make this happen we don't think paint is the we think a parking garage on the north side is the best solution we can't get there so we're trying to figure out how do we, we kind of meet in between but so with, with the application that's before us if we approve that and we get paint on the street there's no obligation for anybody to take any further than that and that that's part of our deliberation is that that could be where it's dropped you get uh, paint on the street which I agree with the staff report I don't think is safer I, I think car drivers being what they are um, may not be paying attention and I, I agree that pedestrians being what we are uh, we're gonna cross there um, you know my favorite idea is that you guys add signage in the parking lot that encourages people to go down to Walker and use the signalized crossing there um, rather than encouraging people to cross at mid block where you know the guy in the, the four-wheel drive is barreling down going home um, but what we approve could be where it ends and, and that's part of the concern that I have so just to comment on that you know I, I ride my bike everywhere so I tend to think about moms and strollers I've got four kids and the intersection at Walker and 23rd is actually not a safe crossing I know that it is a crossing but it is not safe I would not take my kids across there um, and so we don't really have a good option we've got one option that isn't actually so the mid block is safer than going at Walker if if I'm hoping that we can actually get lights for me stopping at paint is better than not having nothing but I would love for us to be able to really say hey traffic this is actually a pedestrian zone we've talked to council members who are proposing that maybe we look at uh, lowering the speed limit from 30 it's already too fast we're not the only place that you have north south crossing there's a school just west of here where I watch kids try to cross and run across and beat traffic and so there is multiple concerns for north south crossings on 23rd so we have a, we have a whole big issue we've got to fix in between that we've got a crossing that I think people are going to cross whether we do anything or not so our hope is how do we do this in a way that is thoughtful and if that means we need to do lighting then we're willing to do lighting and I would add on the plan that was part of the application there is the note of optional flashing sign and it could be um, you make a conditional approval that that's part of it it would have to be part it have to be the way the agenda item was item is written in order to that for that to be included well yeah what we could no. do is def defer and you come back with a plan and a cost estimate and approved by the city of what could work something of that nature as as an option I'm not saying that's what we'll do but if we felt that we needed to have a cross in there and we did want to have some light in we would probably want to defer it so you could come back with okay we talked to a contractor here's the cost we're, we're willing to go ahead and do it city approves thinks it's, it's good and then we could go from there right yeah. so the along that the of this item would just be for the paint though so it would actually need to be a new item in order to involve everything you just mentioned as okay. the lights and such okay so we can't defer and then it gets modified by you guys no a staff. deferral of this would be just a deferral of the paint okay. op option it would have to be a new item that demonstrates the information you outlined well I mean just not to question counsel but we you don't think that we could just make a model uh, make a 
in a, in a, a deferral or an approval with a requirement that they provide some sort of lighting? Not as, not as this application has come forward. Okay. No. All right. Yes, ma'am. The so we would have to deny this one, and then they could reapply with a whole package of lighting and striking or denying. Strike. Let's strike it. Just strike the item from the agenda instead so of denying. No, the anything done on it. That's mm -hmm. what striking would do. Just mm -hmm. to remove the item. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm confused on how it's brought forth in our application. We did include those options of the signs and stuff, and I'm not sure why that's not part of the discussion. Council, staff. Well, if it was listed as an optional item, it was always an optional item. So, you know, the only thing, we, you know, we didn't get, it, we didn't get a, a request for a mid-block, you know, a signalized mid-block crossing. That was not part of it. Optional was, I mean, it, it may, there might have been some infer, inference later on in some of the drawings or notations or something like that, but it was not. Well, this um, is the application as it was submitted to you in August. So, as they research that, if, if we have to go with what council says, uh, if you're willing to do lights, and if we feel up here that we should have this this crossing, and it should have lights, right now what the council is advising is we strike the item, let it come back next week, next time with a better presented package of lighting and signage and all that kind of stuff. Can Right, and, and, and the, the generic term lighting that's in the, it's in the request letter could just be like street lighting. Lighting, we, if we look at, you know, when, well, we, took, when we look at like signals, we, I, I they are signals. Right. That that is how you took it, but that was not the intent. And okay, but that's how, had ultimately that was how it was August, presented, so. so. Okay, but that's how council is looking at it. So, uh, we have item 5D for approval. Am I correct? From Commissioner Shulai and Commissioner George. So that's where it's at right now. So do we have some more comments, ma'am? Okay, ma'am. My concern with paint only, an additional concern, is that there, as the pedestrian I just parked, the paint may give me a false sense of permission to cross the road there. That the drivers may not be willing to give the permission on deference. I, I, I feel like pain only is it possibly, and this is my opinion only, could present more risk to the pedestrian if it's not imposing an altered not behavior on pain traffic. Pain only, so. Just, so just to, uh, like, I, maybe I can re reframe what's before us, because what we asked for was you know, as you can all see, pavement marking, signs, and lighting for the safety and security of both pedestrians and drivers. So this is more than, I know we're, we're stuck on this painting. We're not asking for just painting. And that wasn't represented in the uh, request that we were only asking for painting. So if I could, maybe we could reframe it and say, if you were comfortable with this approval in the context that the lighting that we were talking about is flashing lights because uh, we just have a disagreement on what lighting means, which I totally defer to you in terms of being the expert on that, but that was the intent that we had. Uh, can we not get there as a? Well, we have to defer to counsel for the interpretation of Let the Let me motion. ask that for a question, if you yeah. hope bear with me. When this, was, when this was investigated, was traffic signal lighting involved within your analysis of the situation? Not when we prepare the staff report, no. Okay. That would need to be included in order to determine whether or not signal lighting would change his recommendation and the safety situation of that location. It's, it would need to be reevaluated. And this, as it is, was analyzed and in your, investigated as a painting only from the staff perspective. and. That's what was presented on the agenda item. And so we have to go with what the agenda item is. And that was, and if it wasn't correct at the time, perhaps we could have amended it prior to the meeting. But as it comes before the meeting itself, we have to go with what the agenda item state. Well, and, and, and as you just said, the a city just 
didn't look at yellow flashing lights for their rec for their recommendations. So the so the item could be just deferred as is with a further investigation by the city, considering that and cha maybe changing their recommendation or modifying their uh, their recommendation based on those facts, and then we hear about it next next meeting. It would probably be cleaner if it was uh, an amended request or a new request because the bulk of the staff report is already done, but when it comes to terms like lighting, there are, there are like flashing warning signals. There's also a, like a uh, rectangular rapid flashing beacon type thing that could be considered, or there's also a um, hybrid, hybrid pedestrian beacon, which is like a supplemental form of traffic control. So you've got, and then, and then lighting could just be like, a, like lighting at the crosswalk. So there's just more to it than that. So I think, and the other thing is, is when it would be presented, there would have to be probably some commitment for funding along that line too. Would there be an opportunity that we could sit down together and work out what the safest method is? Well, safest and cost. Probably some methods, as he was saying, could be costly and some aren't as costly. And it would be up to the people coming with the funding what they'd be willing to, to pay. So there's a couple pieces here that would have to be worked. Right, so how do we get that conversation started? Well, this motion right here would have to be stricken and then you would just reapply. You already have the basic paperwork and then work with the staff over the next month to look at what's out there and the options and the cost and figure all that out. And then when it comes here, it's just, okay, this is what you all want to do and this is what the staff says would work. They may still have the same recommendation to not do it, but at least we would have the evaluation of signaling and lighting and all that with, the, with that. Because right now we don't have the staff input for any signaling input. Right. That's and, why it would probably be right for us to proceed on. Right, and additionally in the, uh, in the uh, handout that you provided, it showed that there was a new curb extension that could be p potentially looked at opposite where the uh, current one is, or the, the Tower Theater marquee sign. So it may be that you'll be amending your request to, to construct a curb extension and then, and then and look at a slight, a modified proposal. And that's things that we're willing to look at. Um, it's unfortunate that we made application four months ago and we just got the staff report last week, so. Okay, so any other, before we press on, you have a question. Yes, sir. Yeah. I couldn't approve anything if I couldn't see the construction documents of what you're going to do. You showed us what Longmont, Colorado. I mean, if you're serious about thinking about something like that, that ought to have been submitted with your request to start with. This is not. A, it, this is really a serious situation to, to put in a pedestrian crossing with that volume of traffic. I mean, I, I question why that median opening was ever left in there to start with. I mean, I haven't got that answer yet. But, but that's that's not a good deal at all. I, I'm just, and I want to see some construction documents that that staff approved along with the request. That's where I'm at on it. All right. Anybody yeah, I that? think I, I definitely think it needs more than paint, and like you you do too, I think. But um, you know, I've seen where each side of the street has a button that a pedestrian hits, and it's and it basically gives a minute or 30 seconds of time that flashing lights in, buried in the asphalt for drivers to see little white LED lights that start flashing that border the uh, crossing and then overhead flashing and signs that are flashing on the sides. I think that's what it needs at, at this level. Uh, I mean, this is a, as one of the busiest parts of 23rd and, and in, I guess in the whole city. Um, and to stop traffic there, you need, you need something that really, really stands out. And, um, Although I think we all know people are going to cross, so it needs something. I, I mean, I think this, we have to do something. I, I think just le letting them say, well, they need to go to the street, the ends of the block, um, is not the answer. I think we have to have, it, but it needs to be something that's souped up and not and just. And I understand that. And before we invest in the um, significant expense of construction documents, that is not an inexpensive proposition. We're trying to at least get a, an understanding of yeah, I will. what can be allowed. Right. Well, that, that is what I would suggest that we come up with. I mean, th those work, I've seen them all over the country in real busy areas where people are crossing highways and streets, and they work. 
when you have all those flashing lights on the street and above. So. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Get ready. <laughs> There's so many things on my mind with this application, and it, it, I, don't, I don't really know where to start. I'll start with a question. I can't see that there would be a crosswalk like this approved where there would not be some kind of signage provided by the city in conjunction with it. The, the discussion was it would have to be on the inside side of the, the parking. Is that correct? Would the city at least do that? Yeah. And, and the median? Any sort of mid-block crossing, would, would we would install pedestrian crossing signs at the crossing itself. Okay, could there be signage in the median that is also identifying that as a mid-block crossing? In this particular case, yeah. We, okay, so there is signage. It would be difficult to see, but yes, it could so be. So we've installed. got proper yes. signage. Okay, the, the other thing that is important to my work in Ward 2 is a consciousness of moving away from accommodating the car all the time and start accommodating pedestrians. I think it's just so important that we start doing that. I just got back from a trip to Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm not going to compare apples to oranges. There's a light rail system that goes north and south right through the middle of that city. If you can imagine from I-240 on the south side all the way up to the Kilpatrick Turnpike it is the plan from the north end. There are pedestrian crosswalks that are signed with signs no bigger than this for people crossing a light rail in addition to having cars. So it's, it, we've got to start thinking in this city about accommodating pedestrians and could a sign be enough? It, it is schools. You know, so, you know, I, ju I think I just am really, that's a really important thing to me. As these fellows said, we've got to start with this consciousness somehow. Um, let's consider the speed limit. You know, maybe the speed limit's too high. What's happening in that corridor is exactly what's happened in the Plaza District and in the Paseo. It's exactly what's happened on Western Avenue corridor where we have done these bump outs, there are crosswalks, there are all kinds of elements that are going in there that are trying to accommodate pedestrians. So I'd really like this commission to consider an opportunity today to start this now that we've gotten the conversation in our consciousness above and beyond that it's just paint. There is signage. And that signage is absolutely the responsibility as much to every driver to notice and see and behave on as the red light, the stop sign, and everything else. Uh, I'm done with my diatribe. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, this is, I mean, looking at the drawing, looking at your site plan, um, I'm not sure that this represents the existing conditions of the parallel parking. That there's things that appear to be kind of shown like curbs that would take out parallel parking that I think is there. I'm not sure what you're planning on doing and what you're not planning on having. Are you talking about the north side? Yeah, the north that, side. That is existing conditions with the exception of the wheelchair ramp. So there, There's nothing marked here. and, and there's the, the drawing I'm looking at appears like there's uh, four well, parallel parking spaces on well, the, the north dark, side. The dark line, so at the time the application was made, that lighter line where the curve so is out. I, I can't tell what, okay. and there's, we've talked about, in the course of this conversation, we've talked about we ought to change the speed limit. We ought to, we ought to uh, put flare out uh, curves and stuff like that. It doesn't seem like there's a complete thought. And I appreciate the idea of getting with staff and talking about how do we get there, how do we accomplish this. My um, concern about this application, what's before us today, is that, as I mentioned, a middle block crossing, even if we get a, a couple of signs that are going to be partially blocked by parallel parking um, and striping on the road, I feel like we're doing more to encourage people to enter an unsafe situation than we can't control what you guys do with your property on the parking lot, but asking you to add signage that encourage people to go to Walker. It's, got to be safer than a middle a mid block crossing um, to go down and, and cross with the light 
you you mentioned uh, your visit to another town. I mean, Manhattan is a pretty walkable place, and people cross at the light. They cross at the intersections. And so the same way that we need to accommodate, I totally agree, we need to accommodate pedestrians. We need to get ourselves out of being a totally car culture, but that's a two-way street. Good point. Okay. So, any other comments on item 5D? Okay, we go on over to, uh, to Commissioner Schuline. Your motion stands to approve item 5D. My motion stands. I, I don't want to put them off anymore. I'm sorry. You know, the application was submitted in August. And it does say clearly on the, in the, the first sentence of the third paragraph, uh, our client wishes to represent pavement marking signs and lighting. So it was not like it was overlooked by the applicant when they submitted it. Uh, people are going to cross. I, I think it's a little bit of a stretch to suggest that the parking lot is 50 feet from the intersection at Walker, because that's only the corner of the intersection, and three-fourths or 80 percent of the parking lot is directly across the street, 60 feet from the tower. I think they're going to walk to Walker, which is a, not, a very poorly, uh, as Jonathan said, very poorly marked and not pedestrian friendly at all. They're not going to walk to Hudson. Hudson's not signalized, so there's no benefit there. I think that something is a benefit, and I really want to get these guys going. I don't want to hold them up anymore. So I'll, I'll stamp on my motion, and we'll vote it down, and we can submit something else. But I'd really like to see them. Well, is there any motion uh, on, on the map, et cetera? It was talking about optional flashing lights. Well, yeah, yeah I see that including the diagram. your motion to say, as appropriate, uh, optional in, flashing lights, signage. In the base diagram, they there. show optional flashing signs, which I would love to see included, right? If that would mm -hmm. make it, I assume they would be included, actually. Well, OK, let me just clarify that uh, to the council. Uh, the application showed optional flashing lights, et cetera, as a possibility on their map. Uh, if we approve this as it is, where we're just saying mid-block crossing, does it, do, do we need to include making sure that optional lighting, signage, et cetera, is as approved by the city staff or anything to just make sure that that becomes the safest, rightest thing. Can, can we do that right here with just this uh, motion? Can I ask yes, a clarification please. question? Yes. Are you asking whether or not we can modify the application? Whether he can say in his, app, in his motion, approve item 5D to include ensuring optional lights and signs and markings as necessary for that area or something of that nature. Because when you look at the map that they have, it talks about optional lighting, flashing lights, et cetera. Staff. Would there be any indication as to would be providing said lighting of no. whatever style it is that you're going to recommend? Well, that's a good point. We let me just ask the staff and council, you know, when we talk about uh, traffic signal lights, it goes into the queue that, that gets into the queue and some other organization allocates money to get those done. How about these kind of things? If, if, if they don't come with the money and the, and the city does, hasn't budgeted for it, how does that kind of work? The, the issue is the agenda item itself does not go, does not, <sighs> goes back to your first point, the staff didn't consider yes, flashing lights. Yes, there was, I'm conceding that there may have been a misunderstanding with the application sure. itself and the agenda item. Mm -hmm. However, the item before you does not include what you're asking for. Got it. Okay. So, the response is we could not, it's not, uh, something that we could do as an optional item and add a condition uh, to your approval. Okay, got it. Okay, so there's the council question. Y yes, sir. Respectfully, I want to clearly understand this. It would be signed. It would be signed. Signing is not an optional item. It would have signing. It says crosswalk. I was referring to, I apologize. Uh, no, no, I'm, yes, go ahead. I totally understand where you're coming from. 
I, I want to make certain that myself and the balance of the commission understands that we're not talking about approving a crosswalk that's just paint. Mm -hmm. It will have signs that, that are city signs, that are standard signs that label a crosswalk. That's correct. One can be on either side of the street where the, where the, you know, at the bumpers of park cars or the sides of park cars and in the median. It's, is that correct? There could right. be we would, we would always, on a mid-block crossing, it would always be signed, regardless. Always be signed. Yes. So we have an application for a crosswalk that's painted and signed. And the discussion that we would, that, about additional lighting, even though it's vague how that, that was interpreted when, interpreted when the application was sent in, that would have to be a completely separate, separate application and issue. But today, we have a signed crosswalk. Well, and, and I would throw out there that as we've done at some four-way stops, we've gone with the LED stop sign. I'm assuming they would have a LED option on a yellow with a solar panel thing or something to draw attention to that sign. Would that be if, if they have that kind of stuff? Yeah, the city would ordinarily just put a standard non-lit sign on it. Correct. Because that's, 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 you, that's ordinary business. But if we're concerned that it would need some more attention, you could go out and get an LED sign that would go. If there's, if there's budget available for something like that. As we did with the four-way stop just right down the road here, where we did the stop sign with the LEDs. Yeah, you'd have to, we'd have to make sure. The, the, the toughest nut to crack in a situation like this is finding funding for things mm -hmm. like that. Okay. Ma'am, you have something? What would the signs communicate? What's the verbiage? What's the picture? What is the sign saying? It would indicate the a typical crossing for a sign like this would indicate basically it'd be a, a, a fluorescent yellow diamond shaped sign that would have a walking man on it, a walking person with a downward, with an arrow pointing downward at the crossing. And that's what we would use at the crossing location. And its intention is to give to indicate preferential to, treatment to the pedestrian, just awareness. Does it affect traffic? I, I'm still thinking about the traffic count here and uh, who, who's, who's getting the deference here. Okay, it is, it is a warning sign by nature. Um, drivers are, the, the way uh, Title 47 of state law is written that a pedestrian in a crosswalk has got the right of way. One can only hope that most drivers have brushed up on Title 47 and, are, and they stay current on, on the uh, rules of safe motor vehicle operation, but you know, that's kind of a big assumption on the part of a pedestrian just to step into a street if they just see a Could I interject crosswalk. Something? What you're saying here You'd do the same signage if you're going out here putting where 100 vehicles a day was going up. It'd be the same signage. That's correct. That's correct. And when you have an accident at this location and somebody comes hollering, what are you going to do out here? We need something done. This signing is not working. We need lights and signals and pedestrian signals. Who's responsible for putting that in when that comes back for it? Who's going who's gonna to up, Annie up and do that? It's coming. Well, and I think that what we're saying is if we go to the staff, they'd have to go find funding. It would have to go to somebody who has funds to allocate. Uh, what we've done in the past on these mid-level ones, if the applicant comes with the money, then that kind of helps the process. What I'm saying is they know what they submitted, and yet today they bring this to us and look at it. This is a lot more than what they submitted. I would a lot rather have looked at this on this application than just paint and a couple of signs. That's all they're asking for here. Okay. So just to clarify to council, all we have are the paint and signs. That's all we have on this application. Anything further would have to be brought in on another application. Okay. Any other questions or comments? I just think that they, uh, uh, they're willing to do lights and hopefully even traffic stopping uh, somehow some way, with some way to stop traffic to let people across um, if they're willing to do that I think they need to, to withdraw their application today and bring it back next month with the correct information because paint and these regular signs are not enough at this spot I don't think and um, so I, I would withdraw my second on approving this 
Okay. So now the, the applicant could ask us right now to, with, to withdraw if they wanted to. Okay. So the applicant could ask us to withdraw, and then we press on without talking about or, make, or making a vote on this application. So that's my first comment. So my, I'm just not sure that leaves us exactly. But. Well, it would lead you that there'd be no application, but you would then work with the staff and create something that when you've, ta when you've heard what we've talked about, what things might have to include. How about a new proposal? Instead of striking or denying the application, deferring the application for a month, if you came forward at the same time as next month, you came forward with the light and do a concurrent application Thank you. with the lights as part of a secondary application, they would go, both go forward next month and be voted on at the same time. Let's do that. Would that be an option that you would be open to? I think so. Would that be an option that our yeah. motioner is open to? Okay. Okay. Would you like to? Okay, so just to clarify for records here, item 5D was to approve by Commissioner Shuline, seconded by Commissioner George. Commissioner George has removed his second on that. Then we go back to Commissioner Shuline. Sir, do you have a motion? Uh, go along with the applicant that we're going to do with, uh, defer until next month and we'll bring a subsequent application. Okay, so we have a motion from Commissioner Shuline to defer item 5D in concurrent with the applicant uh, to next meeting with a possible second, uh, what, was the, what was the term? The, we don't the even. Deferral is the deferral. Okay, to have the deferral. We have a second on this. Second. We have a second by Commissioner Littlefield. Do we have any discussion on item 5D? I'm just like, okay. to, oh, I'm sorry. But I want to make sure so we don't actually make this man blow up next month with frustration. Is whatever, I want to make sure that we are fully, um, that you have the benefit of understanding what would that concurrent application need to entail from staff perspective, possibly any dialogue in the interim. So it is most full, most robust, most approvable, most safe mm -hmm. when you do come back. Because if the, the, the mere presence of some light, if it's the wrong light or the less ideal light, and I were you, I'd be a little frustrated. So I would like you to have the benefit. I mean, what does that look like for him as he... What does the next two weeks look, look like, or three weeks, so the right concurrent application is robust and complete, so it gives this the greatest chance of best safety for users. That's, I'm not concerned about approvability. I want it to be the most safe application for the users of this mid-block. What does that look like for him? They would need to come into our office and have sit down for a meeting talk about options and talk about costs. So he needs to set that up with you. Yeah, I can be arranged after this meeting. Okay. Yes, sir. I think it would help me in evaluating what the future potential is for this crossing if there's, even if it's a hand sketch of what does that mean for the parallel parking and, and there's, a, there's a number of issues that ultimately we would have to decide on. Um, how does the parallel parking layout and if there are concrete flares to add uh, extra protection to people, what would you envision on, on those? What would that look like? Would be helpful for me in evaluating this. Sure. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Shuline, second by Commissioner Littlefield to defer item 5D. Have your votes, please. Okay, item is deferred. Item 5E, Amanda Janets. Uh, consider a request to change the speed limit on South Mustang Road, State Highway 4, between Southwest 15th Street and Southwest 59th Street from 55 miles per hour to 45 miles per hour. Anybody here to speak on item 5E? Yes, ma'am, if I could have your name, your address, and you have up to five minutes. Yes, my name is Amanda Janitz, and my address is 11317 Southwest 38th Street. 
and I live in the, in the Canterbury edition that's at Southwest 38th Street, so between Southwest 59th, so, I'm sorry, 15th and Southwest 59th, and it's 55 miles an hour currently there. And north and south of this area, it's 45. So I'm requesting to, to uh, decrease the speed limit to 45 miles per hour due to the growing, it, there's, it's gr a growing area with new neighborhoods and apartment complexes. So I think it would be safer for people turning in and out. All right. Thank you Thank very you. much, ma'am. Staff input. All right. Very simply put, uh, reducing the speed limit from 55 to 45 will establish a consistent speed limit on Mustang Road between the, uh, basically from south of Yukon to the northern corporate limits of the city of Mustang. Uh, there is increased uh, urbanization along this particular corridor. The, uh, this particular roadway does have a barrier curve along it. Um, at this particular time, you know, given the fact that the area is in increasing in urbanization, uh, staff would support the reduction of the speed limit to 45. Um, we've discussed this with our colleagues at the state, and they are also receptive to this because after the commission takes action on this particular case, because since sta um, Mustang Road is State Highway 4, we'll refer to ODOT, who will then present it to the uh, Highway Commission for their consideration. All right. Thank you very much. We have a motion for 5E. I move approval. We have a motion from Commissioner George to approve item 5E. Do we have a second? A second. We have a second by Commissioner Witcher. Do we have any discussion on item 5E? Okay, we have a motion to approve item 5E from Commissioner George, second by Commissioner Witcher. Can I have your votes, please? The item is approved. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, we go on now to item 5F. Uh, Cal A. Wilson, designer arch Design Architects Plus Inc. Consider request 2-1, establish 60 degree angle parking on the southwest side of Northwest 15th Street from approximately 97 feet east to 203 feet east of the east curb line of North Bilene By Avenue. And two, establish a reserve parking space for the physically disabled on the south side of Northwest 15th Street from approximately 183 feet east to 203 feet east of the east curb line of North North Bilene Avenue. Hi there, sir. If I can have your name, your address, and you have up to five minutes, sir. My name is Cale Wilson. I'm with Design Architects Plus here representing Oklahoma City Public Schools. Our address is 1501 Southwest 104th in Oklahoma City. Uh, I actually don't really have any comments. Uh, the only comment we really have on the staff recommendation, we would like to keep the 20-foot-1 dimension. Uh, I know the staff did some studies and talked about different cars and different lengths. We understand that in F-250s and 350s and box trucks, uh, we feel me, we've met the requirements now and, and want to keep the 20-foot one if we can. I think staff requested it to be extended to 23 feet 5. Otherwise, we have no requirements. All right. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Staff, can we have your input, please? Okay. We've got our complete report before you. I'll just go through, run through the uh, summary of staff recommendations. Uh, we say that provided a, a perpendicular depth of at least 23 and a half feet is used for the parking area, the 60 degree angle parking spaces within the inset parking area, including the reserve space for the physically disabled, should have no adverse in traffic impact on Northwest 15th Street. So we've got uh, three items that staff would recommend that would be that should be included in a motion for approval on this particular item. All right, I do, we have a motion concerning item 5F. Chairman, I'll never be approved, with the, including the staff's recommendation, with the three items listed. Do you want me to read them? Or do you... No, as, as I've written. Okay, so we have a motion to approve item 5F with the three modifications from the staff input from Commissioner Schuine. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second by Commissioner Witcher. Do we have any talk on this item? I'd like to ask, what's the difference between the 23 and the 20? Uh, the applicant wants to do 20 feet, you're saying 23. This, the standard out. that's used is a, for the 20-foot 20, 20 depth is based on the city's off-street parking standards, which is what you would find in like grocery store parking lot or something like that. These would be backing up into like aisles between parked cars, which are not the same thing as travel aisles. The city doesn't have any published standards for on-street angle parking. so. What you've seen over the past couple of years is uh, every time we've gotten a request that's come in, we've reviewed, we've reviewed the request based on the varying angles that have been proposed, anywhere from 45, 60 to 90. And, and in every one of those cases, we've run test vehicles to find out how much space you need behind a vehicle and what kind of maneuvering space you need in the lane behind it in order to 
back that vehicle out without impeding traffic flow in, in, the, uh, in, the, oppo in the lane opposite. So our intent is to come up with a standard that we allowed you to back out without ever, without ever having to cross like, the center line of the roadway or to affect any other lanes other than the one that you're backing into. And, that's a, and that is our basis for recommending that. And, you know, it's based on a variety of different test vehicles. And, you know, there's, there are a fair number of long body vehicles in this truck, whether they be like Suburbans, large pickup trucks or whatever. So we're just trying to come up with a, a reasonable standard that should prevent a, you know, a long body vehicle from having like a, a portion of its bumper hanging out beyond the curb line on the road. So the concern is the, the, the vehicle next to it's a long body, that vehicle's a long body. By being uh, there, they, they need to have enough room to come out. Because, you know, if, if the vehicle to your right is a short body, you can cut it a little quicker. Right, there's that. So, but even if there is so no other... When you, look right. at the, when you look at that, you're right. saying you got a long body vehicle, another one, and the, this one needs to come out. By the time they're able to turn, they can't make it far enough without going into the other lane. Right. Okay. And that's particularly the case. Not so much a case on where you're backing out onto a residential street, but you know we had uh, cases in the past where we've had requests for angle parking on things like Northwest 13th Street, and that's a four-lane roadway. And you, we want to make sure that in order to maneuver in and out, you don't impact both lanes uh, of 13th Street next to the parking area. You just impact the one lane, so you don't have to be looking for two lanes of approaching traffic when you're trying to maneuver out. Okay, and then we go to the applicant on the 20. Well, and I guess our, our discussion about that is we can pick any truck. I mean, we did a 250. F-250 is what they gave an example of, but the Suburban works just fine. So when we start opening it up to many different vehicles, I mean, how do we know a box truck? I mean, there could be anything parking here uh, that would hang out. Uh, we're looking at... Uh, Typical people coming to get their kids to and from school. They could be driving anything, really. Uh, we just don't feel there's a need now to extend farther into our property because this is going to require additional easements per item number three. Uh, it's a short term parking. Uh, we don't technically need this parking to do the project. Uh, we wanted to provide the parking. We think that will help with that handicap accessibility to the new gym, uh, as well as some picking up and dropping off if they drop kids off at practice. Right, and it'll also be a, this will also be unregulated public parking since it's built within the right of way. So, it's not to say that it'll be exclusively used by you know people who've got business at the school. It could be used by anyone in the neighborhood. Okay, sir. The other two items on the staff of staff recommendation, you don't have any issue with just the no. depth of that, um, and then the the twenty three foot. It doesn't appear on your site plan that there's really an impediment to, to pushing it in another three feet. Is there, um, is there a reason why you don't want to? There's additional costs and additional easements that we're going to have to grant back to the city. It just pushes it closer and closer to the, the proposed facility. Okay. It's already, you know, the, the property line is already having to be moved, I guess. I guess we'll give an easement for where the sidewalk is now. It kind of goes down the center of the sidewalk. Yeah, I see, I see what you got there. Well, I... I've got a, I've got an F-150 that has a full bed, and it's it's 20 feet long, and I'm about the same size as, as most of the suburbans in the in the parking lot. So I could see it being, uh, you're probably familiar with the Putnam City Administration mm -hmm. and that angled parking. And I always hang out into the, you know, whatever it is, 44th Street there. Um, so so I do think it's a it's an impediment. It's not the end of the world, but if there was a way to Get, get that additional length, I think it'd be good. Okay. I, I understand the discussion. I mean, it's just from the school district side, it's additional costs and additional easements granted back to the city. Okay. Ma'am? Commissioner Yonkel, did you? Are you pulling your finger back? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you. Any other discussion on item 5F? Okay, we have a motion to approve item 5F from Commissioner Shuline, seconded by Commissioner Witcher, including the three items from staff. Let me have you both support. All right, item is approved. Thanks. Okay. 
We go on now to item 5G, Jennifer Snow, to consider a request to remove the north and southbound yield control on North Phillips Avenue at Northeast 21st Street and establish all-way stock control. So if I could have your name and address, you have up to five minutes, and please fill out a form when you're done. I, thank you. I did fill out a form. Oh, we got one. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. All right. Thank you very much. My name is Joshua Greenhaw. Uh, address is 721 Northeast 21st Street. <clears throat> thank you. I don't think I have enough copies, but they're, they're somewhat large, and it, it shouldn't be too complicated. <clears throat> As I said, my name is Joshua Greenholm, the designated representative of Jen Snow, who's the applicant in this matter. Um, thank you all for the opportunity to be heard. Our neighborhood is concerned with this matter, as you can see from the overwhelming response of the respondents on the petition submitted by Ms. Snow. Uh, I believe the three applicants, or I'm sorry, the three uh, parties within the 300 foot radius who did not sign the petition were either uh, vacant or uh, the same owners, and we had no one opposed. Um, our, while our neighborhood's concerned about this matter, I myself am concerned. Uh, the reason for my concern is my concern for the safety of my child uh, and of the children who live on my street. There are uh, anywhere from six to ten children who live there uh, most of the time. and. My concern stems from the excessive speed that vehicles reach on this street. As you can see um, from the handout I passed out there, from Kelly to Culbertson all the way to Lincoln, there's no signal, there's no stop. Those vehicles turn off of either Kelly or they turn off of Lincoln and uh, proceed unimpeded uh, al almost half a mile, which is um, somewhat uh, astonishing when I when I spent the time to, to calculate how long that distance is. Um, the traffic that goes that fast is usually morning or evening rush hour traffic. There are a lot of uh, people who use that street who work, I believe, at the Health Sciences Center or at the State Capitol. I don't know that for a fact, but it's just anecdotal evidence, and I've lived there for 10 years. Um, I think they use 21st Street as a shortcut because there's no traffic signal of any kind. Um, I also looked at the traffic study that was done in this matter, and it, it does seem like it's a little, um, a little low, and my concern is that I don't know that this traffic study was done uh, during the times when most of the traffic actually um, is present on that street. From the materials provided, it looked like this traffic study lasted only an hour. Uh, I don't know when exactly it was done, but uh, the pictures submitted with, with the application, given the mail trucks and the, the light and so forth, it looks like it was probably mid-afternoon on November 2nd. Such a study would not have captured all of the traffic that goes up and down that street. Um, I, I noticed the staff uh, recommended not to approve this request, and I'm concerned that this commission may be making a decision based on incomplete data, uh, for, based on the traffic report um, presented. And I'd like to reserve some time to either uh, address any concerns or, or answer any questions of the commission. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Anybody else want to speak on item 5G? Please come on up. Thank you very much. Let me have your name, your address, and you have up to five minutes. Sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Terry Klein. I live at 712 Northeast 21st Street, uh, the same street as uh, the Greenhaws. And uh, I've been a resident for, in the neighborhood for approximately 15 years now. And during those 15 years, we've seen a real revitalization of this old historic neighborhood. And frankly, the nature of the neighborhood has changed considerably. We've seen a number of young families move in with young kids. And the public safety needs of those kids and how that gets addressed in this now much more residential neighborhood 
has frankly not kept pace with that revitalization. As Mr. Greenhaw presented, on any given evening, especially in the warmer months, it's not uncommon to have six to ten children in a one block area, one block, uh, with parents congregating on the front porches of the neighborhood, which as you can imagine is very exciting to see uh, in the neighborhood, but we really want to provide a safe environment for children to play and for families to be together. And when we're sitting there and we see cars speed down the street uh, that are traveling at least two blocks, uh, it's very clear that we need to do something to uh, slow down that traffic and uh, help provide a safe environment for kids and their families. So we would greatly appreciate your consideration in placing those uh, four-way stop uh, at that particular intersection. So thank you for your consideration. Thank you very much. Anybody else want to speak on item 5G? Okay. Staff input, please. Okay. Uh, you got the, your comments before you. Uh, with respect to some of the concerns about uh, our traffic study work, uh, we did get 24-hour volume counts on this particular roadway, and we got a uh, combined intersection entering volume of 1,090 vehicles per day. That'd be the total total traffic entering on all approaches into the into that particular intersection. Uh, our count on 21st Street in particular shows that we get about 532 cars per day on on that particular roadway. Um, our the 85th percentile speed that we determined when we went out on November 2nd and conducted and conducted a, a spot speed study was. 29 miles per hour. We did observe, I believe it was a 37 mile an hour high during over the course of that particular study. Um, this particular location doesn't have a collision history or, or view obstructions, which would be mitigating um, circumstances to consider for the use of, you know, considering use, using all way stop control at it. Um, the city's current criteria for considering all way stop control is for an intersection to have at least a traffic entering volume of 2,500 vehicles per day. This, like I said, this one's gone just over 1,000. Uh, even in the manual on uniform traffic control devices when considering uh, all-way stop control, they use a, lower, a slightly lower threshold of 2,000 vehicles per day. Uh, action on this particular item would be at the discretion of the commission, but given the, ex given the existing traffic volumes and the absence of a collision history ind indicative of any particular hazards at the intersection, Staff just doesn't have cause to recommend replacing the current yield control with stop control. Thank you very Happy much. So we have questions. a motion concerning item 5G. Move for approval. We have a motion to approve item 5G from Commissioner Littlefield. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Commissioner Yonkel. Any discussion on this item? Yes, sir. Okay. This is it. interesting to look at. From Lincoln Boulevard to Phillips, there's no parking any time on both sides of that street. And we've had discussion here and conversation about how that opens up roadways. It, 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 you're eliminating a, a traffic calming element there. And it's the same situation if you go north from northeast 21st Street up to, I believe, it's 23rd Street. You have the governor's mansion on one side that takes up that whole stretch. And you have parking on the west side of that whole stretch. There's literally nothing there, but let's just go. Um, with the absence of any other available tracking, uh, traffic calming device today, I'm totally in agreement with this four-way stop. Thanks. Yes, sir. Over here. Well, I just wanted to ask the staff, did we do follow-up checks where we installed multi-way stops to, and how, what impact it had on the speed reduction? There was a, a, a report from staff at the end of uh, last month's agenda where we looked at four different intersections, and this was where we had before and after studies done, we had them ranging in times from about, I believe it was nine months out to three years. And basically what we found in the areas where we'd studied speed prior to the installation of the stop control, that there was essentially no variation in speed ultimately. In some locations it was actually higher, but it, as, far, as far as a long-term speed control, always stop will, will influence speed around the intersection, but away from the intersection, it doesn't, it's not effective as a speed control device. And in this particular, in this particular location you're talking about, there being you know, no parking allowed on 21st Street to the west of Lindsay. The speed study that we conducted was to the east of Lindsay where on-street parking is allowed. So that's just showing you, you know, if we were to have studied the, uh, maybe the other side, we might have come up with even higher numbers. But this right here is showing you what the 85th percentile speed is 
on a portion of the roadway park where parking is allowed. Yes, sir. Come on up. Hmm? Sure. Um, commissioners, I east of Lindsay Street, um, there's no on-street parking allowed. I live there. There are two. There's signs on both sides of the road, uh, and despite despite that, the, the cars are parked there. You can see from those pictures. Uh, let's see. There's a. Um, it's quite frustrating to me. I deal with it every day, backing out of my driveway. Uh, so I'm I'm quite attuned to the the fact that there are cars parked there, despite the the pro prohibition. I think Commissioner Littlefield's comment was that we have found that parallel parking, cars being parked uh, parallel parked on the street, is does slow down traffic. And so his comment just supports your application. Okay. Yeah. It, short of that, there, there's no other traffic calming. Thing. So my question is, would it change your opinion about this application if there was uh, parallel parking allowed on 21st Street between Phillips and Lincoln? To respond to your question, it would not. And the reason why it would not is because all we have to do is look, look at the petition. Look at the completeness of the petition that these people had to, had to do. They were required to do it. This is uh, a neighborhood that, that feels as though this is uh, something that would, would help them with this problem in the absence of any other thing that is available today to do there. Answer your question, Mr. Richard. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion on item 5G? Okay. We have a motion to approve item 5G from Commissioner Littlefield, second by Commissioner Yonkel. Let's have your votes, please. Item is approved. Okay, we go on to item six, comments from citizens. Anybody wish to speak? Right, we go on to item seven, reports from other traffic commissioners. Let's go down the list. Commissioner Witcher? Nothing, sir. Commissioner Lowfield? Nothing in Ward 2. I do believe that we're going to be having a traffic coming subcommittee meeting after this meeting. Well, you know, and what you were talking to, what we just approved a stop sign for, was not what traffic common is about. Uh, you know, what's going to be the solution for a half mile road through a residential area where there's no parking and cars feel that they can speed and they think it's okay? We're sure looking at some. Uh, yeah, I know. That's the yeah, and that's that's the hard part is these established areas. This kind of and and it's an established area that maybe has grown. Uh, things on each side where now it becomes a throwaway more than what it was built 40 years ago or whatever. I, I will add an important point though and the important point is is that staff commented today that although it doesn't come traffic along the entire corridor being scrutinized it does have an impact at that point and that's a better form of traffic calming than no traffic calming at all right. is kind of how I perceive that but yeah, with it, regard to these types of applications. We're just looking forward to see what could be a solution to a half mile straight line, what looks like 35 miles an hour, we're supposed to be 25, maybe even less because of kids, et cetera. What can be done to, to, to make that happen? And, and, and I know Perhaps that's the work you've been working on. Speed humps or Speed bumps we'll have to wait or something in that kind of fashion. Yep. Or a nice little zigzag in there where you go down to one lane. <laughs> okay, we go on now to, uh, let's see here. Move here. Commissioner Hale. Nothing to add, thank you. Commissioner Shuline. Commissioner Miller. Nothing, sir. Commissioner George. No, not really. Just Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everyone right, here. Merry hey, Christmas. And Commissioner Yonker. Commissioner George Stallmine. Oh, <laughs> as a member at large's job. Merry to talk Christmas about the whole city. to all. We can take a motion so you can submit it next month. If you like. <laughs> okay, LT. Anything? I have nothing. Sir. Nothing. Uh, council. Okay, staff. Oh, oh yeah, this is our uh, typical uh, monthly report on the installation of uh, yield signs and parking controls that we've installed administratively. Okay. Any it. other business that we need to take care of? Can we have a motion? To, oh, have a motion. Second. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All right. Let's vote. And we're out of here. Thank you very much.